Caring for two babies at the same time is one of the hardest things a person can do in their entire lifetime. It seems like it's a never ending marathon. We all know that the first year of being a twin parent can be overwhelming and put us into what we know as survival mode. But are we destined to just survive? Or is it possible to have a more fulfilling life than just getting by during this time? Our expert today is Kristen Eberly, twin mom and twin mom coach. She's the founder of Harmony and Multiples, who helps twin moms go from surviving into thriving. This is Twin Talks. The ultrasound shows your babies to be healthy. What? Did you say babies? You're huge. Are you having twins? Are they natural? Which one do you like better? Twins, huh? My neighbor's cousin's brother's uncle's a twin. So can they read each other's minds? How do you tell them apart? Twins? You got a two for one. Do twins run in your family? Double trouble. You're not having any more, are you? At least you're not Octomom. If you're pregnant with twins or you're an experienced twin parent, odds are you've heard it all before. Now it's time to hear from the experts. This is Twin Talks, Parenting Times 2. Welcome to Twin Talks. My name is Christine Stewart Fitzgerald, and I'm your host. I I first had my identical twin girls, and then two years later, um, I thought that having another baby would be a good idea. Well, it was eventually, but (laughs) it was truly hard the first couple years. Um, And I'll talk a little bit about more of that in just a bit with our guest. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button in your podcast app and make sure you get the latest content. You can also get updates about our new episodes from Twin Talks and other great parenting shows by subscribing to our weekly newsletter at newmommymedia.com. And if you're interested in getting an inside look at our show, then check out our membership club called Mighty Moms. It's where we chat more about the topics discussed here on the show, and it's a great way to suggest topic ideas or even to let us know that you'd like to be a guest on an upcoming episode. Well, let's meet our guests today. So with us is Kristen Everly. She is a twin mom coach with a background in maternal mental health, and she specializes in helping women manage the chaos of parenthood especially as a twin mom herself. Kristen, tell us a little bit about your family. Yes. So thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here today to talk with you. So I am Kristen and I am a mom to a singleton who is six and a half years old. He's a singleton boy. And I'm also a mom to identical twin boys who just turned four. Um, And so I am no... um, I, I am a friend of survival mode. I know what it's like. I've been there and I um, am excited to be able to talk about it today. I think for me, survival mode kind of like just snuck up on me um, with my first. I felt like I was I was okay and I was really navigating. I was um, specialized in uh, early childhood mental health and maternal mental health. So I really thought that I was going to do great. And then all of a sudden became a mom and realized like, wow, this is this is a lot harder than than I expected. And um, did a lot of work to be able to try to help uh, myself and then help my kiddo. And then I became a twin mom in, um, I'm going to back up, in January of 2020, I was pregnant, um, but found out at my 20-week anatomy scan that it was actually twins. So I had two (laughs) previous anatomy scans and they missed that second baby. So I guess that, yep, (laughs) hidden twin syndrome, I guess, can be a real thing. Um, And so that was January 2020. We found out it it was twins at 20 weeks. And then... Then um, I just started to feel like I was always like behind and I was catching up. I missed the extra ultrasounds. I wasn't taking enough prenatal vitamins. We had to do the special um, heart checks, all of the things. And I just felt like I was perpetually behind. And then in March 2020 came the pandemic. Then my bo- boys were born in April 2020. Um, and so it was wow. just it was just a whirlwind. And um, I quickly found myself in survival mode. Um, without even really realizing what was happening and why I was there and and what caused me to be there. Um, And it took me a long time to get out of survival mode. And um, I used that work that I did myself personally, and then my training, my education, my background, to be able to help twin moms either stop survival mode or if they're in survival mode to get out of that survival mode cycle. So we can enjoy our twins and we can actually find joy in the moments that everyone tells us that we're supposed to. So I'm glad to be here to talk about it. Wow, we are we are so glad to to have you today. So we're going to take a break, um, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about what it's like to be in the first year and if how how getting out of survival mode might actually be possible. Mm-hmm. 
And we're back with our guests today talking about what it might mean to go beyond just surviving in that, that first year of being a twin parent. Um, so let's dive in. So, okay. So Kristen, <laughs> as you're describing, we know it is, it is so hard um, between the lack of sleep and just the sheer time spent feeding the twins and trying to keep some degree of, of normalcy, whatever that is. Um, I mean, it's just, it is just so overwhelming and, um, the new normal, I mean, it's, it's like nothing, but you know, like we, you know, before there's, there's life before twins and life after twins and there's just nothing that resembles it. And, and, you know, I have to say when you're in your intro, and you mentioned that you you had a son and you know you i mean you were you had your singleton first in my case mm-hmm. i had my my twin girls so i knew nothing about parenting anyway but mm-hmm. it sounds like when you had your your son you thought okay i've i've been down this path of you know having a pregnancy and having a baby and you felt probably somewhat you know, prepared for it. And then you find out twins is like, oh my gosh, this is just a whole nother ball game. <laughs> yep, yep. I thought I was going to be confident second time, mom, I knew what I was doing. And then it was twins. And then I had no idea. It's just like, oh, and, and so I, I think that's, that is just such a common thread, even for experienced parents mm-hmm. that, um, you know, yeah, once we learn we have twins, it's just like, okay, this is just beyond my scope, I, I don't, I'm entering into this, this space of, you know, where I, I don't know how to handle it. And, mm-hmm. you know, just, it's almost like immediately feeling overwhelmed. I mean, I, I can say for myself, it's kind of when, you know, found out having twins, um, it's like, oh, okay. I, I don't know where to go. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I was thinking in our case, we, we were planning on having a baby in our small little condo. And then when it was twins, it's like, wait a minute, we don't even have the space. Like Mm -hmm. it just opened up a whole new realm. And I just felt like I literally felt overwhelmed just within, you know, the the few, you know, days and weeks of like, this is so much bigger than I was expecting. So Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know. I think, you know, after, you know, when we get towards having the twins and then the date, the day to day and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just, we tend to shift towards just getting through the next day without shutting down physically or, um, emotionally. So, um, I don't, when you, when you hear from twin moms, how do they often describe survival mode? Yeah, this, this is a really great question. Um, and first I want to describe what survival mode is and how we often end up in survival mode as twin moms. And then we can describe a little bit more about like what, what people are saying. So for twin moms, the constant demands and challenges of caring for two little ones can often lead to a state of survival mode. And that's like how I describe it is it's a heightened state of stress and arousal in our bodies. And our minds are focused solely on meeting the immediate needs of our children and managing the day-to-day responsibilities of parenting our twins and maybe any other children that we have. It's a natural response to the overwhelming demands of twin parenting. It's like our body's way of prioritizing like survival and ensuring the safety and of the safety and well-being of our children. Hmm. Like it's helpful in the short term. It allows us to handle crises and meet urgent needs, but it becomes problematic when it becomes our default mode of operating on a daily basis. When we're constantly mm-hmm. in survival mode, our bodies are flooded with those stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, and it often leads to that chronic stress, exhaustion, and overwhelm. And one of the problems with survival mode is that we often don't know we're actually in survival mode until maybe looking back or someone, we connect with someone who helps us see it, or there's just, just it's so hard because it's like, it's our normal, it's our new normal, right? Like you said, it's our new way of being. Um, but sometimes what I will hear from twin moms um, is like, I feel like I'm just trying to keep my head above water most days. Or someone will say like, I can't remember the last time I had a moment to myself. Like every day yeah. feels like a whirl, whirlwind of feeding, diaper changings, and taking care of the kiddos. Um, and like I'm, they'll say things like, I'm running on fumes, but somehow I just, I just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, even like sometimes people will say, like, I feel like I'm on constant high alert, waiting for the next meltdown or diaper change, blowout, next wake window, next time they wake up in the middle of the night. Or they'll say things like, I'm so exhausted, but there's always something else that needs to be done. Or things like, I just need a break. Even a few minutes of peace and quiet would make a world of difference. And so when we hear these things, we can say like, oh, that doesn't necessarily sound like um, what we expected these this early years to look like. We know it's going to be hard. And with twins, we know it's going to be even harder. But 
this is a little bit different. The survival mode is just like, we can't, there's not enough time. We can never take a break. We can't rest. We're always thinking about the next thing we have to do or the next like wake window feed, whatever it may be. And it's not for me, the, the biggest indicator that we're in the survival mode is that we're not focusing on finding these moments of joy with our twins or in our life. We're really having a hard time focusing on anything other than the next thing that we have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's, that's interesting that you said like it, it's kind of – you're saying it's it's like this primal instinct that we mm-hmm. have to just, just get through and focus on, okay, the next thing I have to get through this this feeding. You know, I have to get yep. through this. Okay, I have to yep. <laughs> get them diapered. And so our, our focus is like in the immediate so we can't even think about like, oh my gosh, maybe it's sunny outside and mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. it might be a nice day. We're just like – oh my gosh, I'm just so stressed and I just want to, I just feel so exhausted and, you know, and I, I totally, I can totally relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know when, when I was here, it just felt like, okay, this is just what I, this is just what I have to do. There wasn't any other option really. I didn't know that there was other things that I actually could do. Like when I found out it was twins, the very first thought that I had was, I mean, um, some other things I probably can't say on the podcast, but was like, one of the first things was like, how am I going to survive this? Like that was my immediate expectation rather than anything else. Like how can I um, take care of myself so I can do this? How can I build my village and my tribe and community so I can do this well? It was that first thought is like, we just have to survive it. That's almost the expectation when we have twins. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that is just so common, you know, there's, there's so many different, um, you know, Facebook and social media groups out there, you know, mm-hmm. specifically on twins. And, um, and I think it's just, that is, that is the common thread. Just, just do what you can to survive. Yes. And so, and so is, why, why is that unhelpful? Because I think that that is the common mantra. Mm-hmm. And I think what you're saying very much goes against that. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Because like you see it in, if people are involved in like twin mom support groups, any virtual groups or on Facebook groups or whatnot, like a lot of people will ask like, when does it get easier? And a lot of the responses will generally be, you just have to survive it until, I mean, sometimes people are saying survive it until they're in like elementary school. Um, and that, that's just, that's a long time to not, to be stuck in that survival mode. And so for me, that's why it feels har- harmful because survival mode keeps us stuck in our current moment. It keeps mm-hmm. us stuck in what I would call inaction, meaning like we're just, we're, there's a lot of action, but we're just focusing on the next thing we have to do, not on the, what we can do to set ourselves up for success, to take care of ourselves, to rest, to get breaks, to Um, allow people to help us. Like when we just think you just have to survive it, that just sets that mindset of this is just something I have to survive. And generally when we think about that phrase, I just have to survive it, that generally doesn't mean like, and I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to take care of myself and I'm going to find moments of joy. Like it's just really shifts into like, got to get through it, buckle up, put your head down, put one foot in front of the other and keep going. All the while twin moms and moms all, Um, all moms are being told have to enjoy it now because it's going to go fast and you're going to look back and you're going to miss these years. And so we're stuck in this impossible situation. It's like, okay, but I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to survive it, but I'm also supposed to enjoy it at the same time. Like, I don't know what to do. And then we feel like we're failing. We feel overwhelmed. We feel like we're not doing a good enough job. And we start to get these really poor and negative ways that we think about ourselves when really it's the expectation that we just need to survive rather than the expectation of we can thrive in the chaos of twins, but we do have to do some of these things so we can actually do that. We need to increase our resilience so we can handle the stress and so we can um, be able to problem solve and think critically and ask for help and take breaks and all of the things that we need to do, but are just incredibly hard to do, especially if we're stuck in that survival mode. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I can totally see how, yeah, we, we have these conflicting messages. I totally agree that mm-hmm. there's, there's the, oh, you know, here's, here's the, you know, the, the cuteness of twins mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and when you watch and look at so many of the different, you know, the reels on Instagram and, you mm-hmm. know, like the, the cuteness and you think, oh, you know, they're enjoying it and I guess I'm supposed to be enjoying it and I'm supposed to you know, <laughs> have these moments, yeah. but I'm like, but I don't I, like, but I, I can't identify with that. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, I wish I had more of those or any of those and it, but it's just not yeah. happening. And then there's almost yep. this like comparison mm-hmm. and sense of guilt. 
And, you know, and I have to wonder, what are all those feelings like, like what kind of effects does that have on us, like on, on a physiological, you know, level? Yeah, like all of these things, like it. when we get into that comparison, we see like, okay, this thing is beautiful on social media, but I'm not saying that my experience doesn't match. And we're stuck in that that survival mode. We start to start to think and feel like, oh, something's wrong with me. I'm not trying hard enough. I um, need to do this. I need to try this strategy. I need to try um, this um activity to support their development. And then we just really continue to stay stuck in this constant state of like vigilance and reactivity that puts significant strain on our bodies and minds. So we think about all of these things that we have to do. And physiologically, that impacts our our nervous system. It slips us over into like what's called our sympathetic nervous system. And this system is responsible for our fight or flight response. If that system remains activated in prolonged periods, that floods our bodies with stress hormones. And while we're, it's helpful for short bursts that we're, we have this stress response, like it keeps us safe. Um, it helps us, you know, do the thing that we need to do, whatever it may be. But if we're in this chronic activation, it can lead to a range of physical symptoms, including like that elevated heart rate, increased blood pressure, muscle tension, like all twin moms are probably walking around just with their shoulders to their ears because <laughs> we're also tense and stressed because there's so much that we're responsible for. And then it can even look like compromised immune function. Like for me, when my boys bring home that bug, I know that we're, it's going to take us a long time to get, to get sick if I am not in a place where I am taking care care of myself. If I'm in that survival mode, um, then I know it's we're just going to be sick for a while. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah. I was going to say just the idea of like, if, if you're stressed out and you're feeling anxious, then it's going to have all these effects on, you know, like sleeping, right. And mm-hmm. energy level and, you know, thinking, I mean, even I'm sure like breastfeeding, right. Because if, if we're not <laughs> feeling great, then that's going to affect our ability to, to breastfeed. And so then there's all those different gold layers of stuff that, you know, kind of piles on there, I would imagine. Yeah. Cause emotionally like operating in that survival mode can lead to the sense of overwhelm, anxiety, and emotional exhaustion. We may find ourselves like constantly on edge and we're worried about, you know, um, supply. We're worried about the next thing that we have to do, or we're anticipating the next crisis or challenging or the next crisis or challenge and struggling to find moments of peace and relaxation amidst the chaos. So, and then our emotional reserves become depleted and it just makes us really difficult for us to regulate our moods and respond calmly. And then mentally that survival mode, it impairs our cognitive functioning, making it harder for us to think clearly, to concentrate, to make decisions. Um, we may experience even like brain fog, forgetfulness, and difficulty with problem solving. And that just makes us feel worse and even more frustrated about ourselves. Oh, wow. So it's so just being having that level of anxiety, it just it's gonna bog us down even more. Even though we mm-hmm. think that we're doing the best, it would just it's we're we're getting even more stuck. So yeah, I can just yeah, this is just like this is so unhealthy on so many different levels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what do what do twin moms need to do to start getting out of it and and you know into a more balanced life? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. And I love this question because oftentimes we get all of this information and then we're like, okay, but what do I do? And then now our anxiety even increases even more. And that is the opposite of what our goal is today. We want to decrease that overwhelm and that anxiety. So I really appreciate this question. And the very first thing, it's it's often like, you know, I will say it's not a magic pill. It's not a quick fix. It's not this one strategy that you do and everything's going to be rainbows and butterflies and sunshine. It is this process of um, taking care of ourselves. and But the very first way that we do that is we need to know what's happening. We need to like pay attention to our emotions, pay attention to our feelings, pay attention to the signals. So like our emotions are just signals and information that our body is telling us like, hey, something's going on here. We're not okay. Do you- pay attention to this. And so what we can do is we can connect with like, wow, I'm feeling really anxious about breastfeeding. And so we can really identify, okay, so anxious about breastfeeding. What, what is that? What's, what's happening here? And so we need to be able to identify our feelings to get that information so that we can decide what we need to do. Do I need to see a lactation consultant? Do I need to um, decrease my expectations? Do I need to seek support? Do I need to 
um, drink more water. But once we can identify like, oh, I'm anxious about this, then we can tip over into a strategy, some something that we can do to take action so we can be able to um, get out of that stress um, response and that survival mode. So, the, so again, that very first thing is like, we need to first pay attention, but survival mode fo- forces us to disconnect from those feelings and emotions. Like we can't really think about like what's happening emotionally for us. We need to keep going. So the first thing is like slowing down and being able to pay attention. Like when I work with twin moms, I talk to them, like, let's look for moments, literally moments where we can take one minute, 30 seconds even, if we can't find that to pause, take a deep breath, and just to ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? Mm-hmm. And so it can be just these really small things where we are now starting to retrain our nervous system and retrain our body that like we can pay attention to these emotions, to these things, because then we can take action. Mm-hmm. I can I can totally relate to that. I mean, I think, um, especially I know when my girls were in, were in the first year, I mean, I think mm-hmm. if, if somebody asked me, you know, how do you feel? Of course, the first thing out of my mouth would be, oh, I'm tired, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Just yep. tired. There's this tired and it's like, well, okay, well, what kind of tired are you? Is it just, mm-hmm. is it a physical tired? Are you emotionally tired? And I think there was probably a lot of things to unpack there. Mm-hmm. And I know, um, you know, in the first, like, so my husband and I, of course, we didn't have any um, prior experience as parents. Mm-hmm. And so we were still negotiating our roles, like, you know, who's doing what? Yep. And, and okay, you know, I mean, of course, like, I would be breastfeeding and what did I need him to do? And, you know, I had like my mother-in-law, but there was all these things where, I, I think I was just, aside from being physically tired, I think there were, you know, I might be just frustrated that maybe things weren't done a certain way or mm-hmm. frustrated that, you know, I wasn't getting enough time or maybe I felt like I wasn't getting enough of something. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think it was just, it would take a little bit of time just to stop and say, well, okay, besides being tired, <laughs> what are those yeah. feelings? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's so important. And for us, like our similar, our experience was similar because my, we tag teamed, my husband took my oldest and then I took the twins for when everybody was home and we were just trying to figure life out. And so even then, like, it was just, okay, I'm kind of figuring out how do I, how do I split myself into two to be there for these two babies? And um, there was just a lot of overwhelm for me and a lot of like, I, am I doing enough? What's happening? I know one of the um, things that I struggled with the most that I think a lot of twin moms um, struggle with is like, they're both crying. They both need me at the same time. Who do I respond to first? And for me, like having to choose which baby to respond to first was so incredibly hard for me and brought up so many feelings um, that sometimes I just had to disconnect from because I was in that survival mode. But now looking back, I was like, oh, wow, I was really struggling. And, but I was in that survival mode. I was focused on the next thing I had to do. I wasn't focused on anything else, um, like what my expectations were for myself. Like I will admit I am um, in perfectionism recovery, I think, if that's what it's called. <laughs> like, and so I had really high unattainable expectations for myself of, and I think Honestly, it's a experience that a lot of modern moms have today is that there's so much parenting information, so much information on social media, which is in theory is a really great thing. But often the information comes too often, too fast. And sometimes it's just not even applicable to twins Mm -hmm. where we can't have these beautiful sensory enrichment activities with twins when we have 30 minutes for tummy time, bottle, you know, cleaning or pumping or whatever it may be. But sometimes we have these really high expectations. And I will say like oftentimes our un- our expectations of ourselves that we have of, of ourselves as moms and as twin moms is usually a huge source of anxiety and overwhelm for us because we think that we need to do all of these things and do everything perfectly. And then we feel when we don't do that because it's not attainable, then we feel like we're failing. And then we feel like we're not trying hard enough and we just need to try harder tomorrow. And we try to get new ideas and new things. But really what's happening is that we are focusing on the wrong things. It's not focusing Mm -hmm. on what I can do for the babies. We need to take care of the babies, but we also need to focus on what can I do for myself so I can take care of myself so I can show up for the mom that I actually want to be. And I can meet some of these maybe more realistic expectations that we have. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's, there's so much in there that I can totally relate to. I mean, like, I think, you know, like, yeah, the, the expectations, I mean, when I, 
you know, first found out I was having babies and I was like, I spent so much time shopping for all the baby mm-hmm. gear. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's it's funny because I, I think I had in my head like, oh, you know, I'm going to have the babies and they're going to be sleeping in these cute little cribs and they're going to have these cute little outfits and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to show pictures to the friends and family and, you know, I, and I thought I had like this organization system and it just, it just went out the window. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I think it was yep. really, it was really disappointing because I, I really felt like I had things together mm-hmm. and it, it, I really didn't. And, you know, I can say, I know I have a number of friends who um, like, you know, example, they would give up completely on dressing the babies in the summertime. They're like, okay, they, they got diapers. So oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've been there. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think there's the expectations, like there just seems like there's so many different layers put on us. Mm-hmm. What we allow that to be put on ourselves really that yeah. um, we just have to go, okay, well, is this something that's really important? Yeah. Yeah. And this is, there could be a whole, like, I don't know, multiple podcast series on expectations for moms today, but it's in the messaging that we get every single day of a good mom. Like a good mom is selfless. A good mom loves every moment of parenting. A good mom was made to be, um, you know, to do this and to find joy in every single moment. And if that's the expectation of what a good mom is, when we think about it, like self being selfless means like you have no self, you have no needs, you have no identity, you don't take care of yourself, you take care of other people. But what that looks like in reality is survival mode, is depletion, and is just this chronic state of overwhelm because we're human beings and we need to be able to fill ourselves up and do things that take care of our bodies and do things that take care of our minds and drink enough water and eat healthy food so we can keep going. Like there's so many things that we need to do so we can actually be that good mom that so many of us are just desperate to be. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, let's take a break. Um, when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion about what twin moms need to do to get out of the survival mode. Welcome back to Twin Talks. Uh, before the break, we were talking with our twin mom coach, Kristen Eberly, about what it takes to move out of survival mode. We talked about first identifying the feelings that you you might have and then looking at your expectations to see, are they healthy? Are they realistic? And um, let's maybe they need to be pared down. Um, so what else do twin bombs need to do? Yeah, this is a wonderful question. One of the things that I talk about with the twin moms that I work with is we really need to think about what are your needs? And so when we think about needs, like these are the things that allow us to function, you know, maybe our basic needs or maybe, so we need to make sure our basic needs are met. Like, are we eating? Are we drinking enough water? Are we um, getting some moments of rest and trying to get as much sleep as, as we can? And I know sleep is super tricky with twins, but really thinking about those basic needs. And then like, what other needs do we, do we have that um, remind us of who we are? that fill our cup up so we can keep pouring out of it for our kids, that we can, um, you know, be able to show up for ourselves and for our families in the way that we want to. Um, And so really checking our needs and identifying what those needs actually are. And they're going to be individual for each person, what might be something that I need. Like I need a homemade caramel latte every morning. And that makes me find joy in the morning when I, my boys wake up way too early still. Like, so that is one of my needs that I've decided this, this fills me up. This brings me joy. I'm going to do this every single morning. And so what I do for twin moms to make this very practical because I've lived it and I know that these grand strategies and things just there's, there's too much to do. And so I try to strive to make things as practical and possible. So one of the intentions that I have my twin moms um, that I work with that I have them set is let's do at least one thing a day that's just for yourself. For me, it's that it's that homemade caramel latte. For other people, it might be something else. Um, could be eating your food while it hot while it's hot. It could be going to the bathroom with the door closed. It could be like all of these really basic things wait, that when wait. we think, right when we think about it, like oh yeah, I don't think I do that. Um, and then those are the needs that reminds us that we are 
a human being who has needs. And then the second part of that, and then those needs deserve to be met. Because when we're in the survival mode, one of the strategies that we do so we can keep going is we self-sacrifice our needs. We stop taking care of ourselves. We think, oh, I'll take a shower and, and wash my hair tomorrow. And then tomorrow turns into five days and we're just feeling really dirty and bad about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, and so we need to really focus on what are these one things that we can do so we can so we can show up for the way that we want to be. Because if we have these expectations like we talked about and we're not meeting our needs, there's no way that we can attain those expectations. And then we're left feeling awful. Oh, oh my gosh. You know, I, I love your idea of just, you know, having one thing mm-hmm. in the day. Because yep. I mean, that, that makes it so easy to think about like, okay, what is my one thing? And maybe it's, it is the same thing from day to yeah. day, like, like what you have. Or mm-hmm. maybe it's just like, okay, you know what? I just want to get outside. Yes. I just want to go for a walk today. Yep. And, and maybe tomorrow I'm going to reward myself with, you know, a, you know, latte or <laughs> just, yes. yeah. Yep. Or, or, you know, maybe even like, okay, um, I, I want to have talked to one of my good friends on the mm-hmm. phone and just have that, you know, maybe 30 minutes <laughs> yep. just to, just to talk. Yeah. Um, yep. And so, it's really these yeah. like simple things that we can do. We think it's simple, but honestly for us, it's life changing because it reminds us, oh yeah, I can do these things. And oh yeah, my de- needs deserve to be met. And then now once we have the success of doing the one thing, the hope is that we can build on it and then we can do these beautiful things. And I think when you said going outside, that just that, that's like one of the most important things that we can do is get outside and move our bodies. So if we can add those to the list of needs that we're doing, those are so regulating for our bodies and for our nervous system and help us stop that stress cycle. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I, I think, okay, as, as, as twin parents, we mm-hmm. all know that to do those things, sometimes it's, it's we're either taking the twins with us mm-hmm. or we're finding someone who can help us. Because I mean, there's times when we just, we need to be alone. Mm-hmm. And um, yep. I, I don't know, I mean, I love, I love my girls, but there are times where Oh my gosh, I, I you know, I would have them like they would like my youngest, she she loved to breastfeed. She would be on me all the time. And there were mm-hmm, times mm-hmm. I just needed to, to her to not be physically on me. I needed yep. to have my space. Yep. And so just to do that though, it seems like it it just required some degree of planning and I'd have mm-hmm. to say, "Okay, I need this time," you know, and I'd have to either get, you know, babysitter or someone so I think there's there's maybe to have those needs met, um it takes a little bit of legwork to communicate that and yes. say, I need to do this or I need to plan it out. Um, yep. So it requires a little bit of forethought, right? It does. It does. And I will say this is not like a just do one thing and, and you'll be great. Like th- it does take work and it does take planning. And this is why it's so hard. And this is why like we need we need help. We can't just say, okay, I'm going to add this to the list and I'm going to do one more thing. Um, we can get really creative about how we um, – how we meet these needs. And that's one of the things that I work with really hard with twin moms is like, what does this look like for you? And how can we uh, individualize this to your current situation? Because not everyone has access to um, childcare support. Not everyone has um, a partner that's available and home 24 seven. And so we do have to get creative, but the very first thing that we need to do is we need to communicate our needs to someone else. We can't just say, okay, I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to do it all by myself. Like we have to be able to communicate it and say, this is really important to me. I've learned that I'm just in, and I'm just in survival mode right now. And I need some help getting out of it. So in the morning, I need you five minutes to go take the twins and I will do this, this, and this. So it does require planning and communication. And I will say this communication, um, sometimes in, um, In partnerships and in relationships like this, it's easy. Their partner's like, okay, great. I got it. No problem. Sometimes there's a lot of barriers to that. And it takes multiple conversations um, over time um, just to set that, again, that realistic expectation of it's not always just do this and everything will be rainbows and butterflies and sunshine. Sometimes there are boundaries that we need to set and we need to say, this is what I need. I am letting you know this is what I need and I need you to do this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. We can yeah. talk about what that looks like, but we do sometimes have to set a boundary. And for me, boundaries are just saying what's okay and what's not okay for us. And so that boundary may, may be, it's like, it's not okay for, for in my part, situation for a while, it was like, it's not okay that I wake up every morning really early and you get to sleep in. 
But my partner didn't know that that was a problem for me because I didn't say anything to him mm-hmm. about it. And so once mm-hmm. I was able to say like, hey, we need to switch off on the weekend so I can be able to get some sleep, then then it worked out. But it takes that step of we need to actually say something and set that boundary for ourselves. Yeah. I think that is the hardest thing is just mm-hmm. sometimes community because it, and I get it. Like I think our partners, I mean, in a lot of the, the guys, the husbands are just really clueless. <laughs> I mean, um, and I think, you know, extended friends and family who, who just haven't had this experience. I mm-hmm. mean, they, they can't, they, they just don't know. They're not inside our head. So um, I, I, yeah, I, I think we, you know, we might be saying, Hey, don't you see that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tired and I'm, you know, like just exhausted. I'm doing this. Don't, don't you get it? But it's, it's really not clear what we mm-hmm. need. So, um, yep. I, I think, you know, maybe that's time just, you know, verbally say it or, you know, a little note, you know, about mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it can be anything. Sometimes it it can be even like text messages. We have this belief that it needs to be in person. And maybe that's like the the what we're shooting for. But I know if I were to have a conversation with my husband about something important and my kids are around, we're not having that conversation because everybody has needs and everybody's loud and everybody wants attention. And so sometimes it can be like text messages. Sometimes it can be like, hey, writing a note, whatever works. Um, the whole goal is that we have that communication so we can connect on this issue. A lot of times we see in um, these early years, we're both in survival mode, both partners. And so we disconnect, we don't communicate, we just survive. But any way that we can, we need to be able to communicate what's happening. So we can be on the same page and we can support each other. Because it's hard. I I don't know if you know that, but raising twins is really hard. (laughs) And we, um, we have to be able to do it with our village and with our people as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, so if we communicating our needs and Mm -hmm. and setting boundaries and so what are some of the other, the steps that you would recommend within this process? Yeah. And so one of the things that we really want to look at is like, what are the things that are easy for you already? We don't want to reinvent the wheel. So if you have strengths or if there are things that you are, um, really good at if there's things that you enjoy like we really want to focus on like how to incorporate those like for me like I'm pretty good at at organizing and planning and so that was one of the things that like okay I really need to focus on organizing and planning so we can make our outing more successful so let me pack the diaper bag with everything that we would need like that's something that was a strength for mine so I didn't necessarily need to um, reinvent the wheel I was able to remember the things that I'm good at because for me having twins was the most humbling experience that I've ever had. Um, And reminding myself of my strengths, the things that I'm good at, has been um, really helpful to reconnect with myself and reconnect with um, that confidence, my certainty of myself as well. Um, And then some of the other like really um, practical steps that we can do is, like I said, is movement, doing things that remind us of who we are, um, being outside. And there's, there's a bunch of different, um, strategies and things that I work with, with, with the twin moms that I do. So we can regulate our nervous system. And so we can be able to take these practical strategies and, um, handle the stress and thrive with twins. Mm-hmm. That's it's interesting. You're, I think you're so right. Like the idea of the strength and the strengths can be, there's the, the physical strengths of, you know, maybe it looks like, you know, using, you know, going outside or if, you mm-hmm. know, if you're, if you like to go hiking, then yes. just figuring out a way yep. to do that, you going outside or, um, you know, I know like in my case, it's funny. I think like, um, career wise, um, I ended up, um, getting involved with my local twins club Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, did some different programs and brought in, you know, I was part of charge of the speaking program and it was really great for me to, I met some friends and we have, we're lifelong friends now. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I could do something different that it was, fulfilling for me personally. Um, and it was, you know, hadn't planned on it. So, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> I, so I think I, I think my, my takeaway is just that, um, you know, you, you can do things differently and it's, it can be unexpected as well. Um, mm-hmm. just, you know, finding, you know, finding commonalities with other, you know, twin parents or, just, you know, like going and exploring new places that maybe you wouldn't have gone to, you know, mm-hmm. and, and finding connections there. So, um, I, I, it's like, it, I think it really means you have to have an open mind to it. 
Yeah. Yep. And that's one of the first things to go in survival mode, right? Is that it's, we're just focused on that next thing. And so if we can do these small things to take care of ourselves, then it opens up um, our, ourselves for this problem solving, this creativity and this being able to be flexible and adaptable and maybe trying some new things um, that maybe we wouldn't before in the first place. Yeah. Now also, okay, I mean, I, I read your guide and mm-hmm. in your guide, you know, you, you talk about um, choosing your village and, um, you know, I have to say um, it really resonated with me because um, I know like we, you know, we just mentioned that there's, there's so much out there that is prescribing a certain way of parenting. Everybody has their opinions and everybody's mm-hmm. saying that this is, you know, this is, this is the next big thing and, you know, this worked for me, so it should work for you. Yes. Um, <laughs> yep. So, so what's your advice to twin moms about checking and choosing their village? Yeah. And this is really something that's unique for modern moms now is that we have um, so much influence um through social media. Um, and we can connect with people that we've never connected with before, people that we wouldn't relate to. Like it's, it is a beautiful thing and there are some risks to social media. And so this is one of the things that I talk to twin moms a lot about is like, we really need to check for your like virtual village. And oftentimes this virtual village is becoming our own village. There are some twin moms that don't have the uh, twin mom group in their community, or they can't for whatever reason, go to the twin mom group, or they don't know anybody who has twins. Um, and so we're really relying on this virtual village that, that we have that is a, that can be such a beautiful thing. But one of the things that we really need to think about is how am I feeling after I consume this person's content? After I, you know, watch their reel, um, read their carousel, like whatever it is, like how am I actually feeling? We need to pause and tune in to say, okay, am I feeling like, am I feeling motivated? And am I feeling like, seen and heard and connected? Or am I feeling um, like I need to try harder? Like I need mm-hmm. to do more? Or um, feeling like just really bad about my ourselves? Like I'm not doing that and I should be doing that. Um, I'm failing. And so if we mm-hmm. leave some of these um, social media pages and really feel like really bad about ourselves, then that's a sign that they are not part of our village. They may want, they may be a wonderful um content creator, whatever it is, but that person might not be for you for where you are in this moment in time. I know Mm -hmm. for me and the work that I put out on social media is really trying to talk about the hard parts of twin parenting um, and really um, provide a safe place for twin moms to do that. But there are some moms who my page is not for. There's been people that have reached out to me that are um, one of their twins has passed away and my content really um, made them grieve their experience mm. all over again. And so I am not for that person. Um, and so I asked her to unfollow me and to make sure that she follows people that that um, don't activate this for her so much. And so we get the choice for social media, who we follow, who, who we don't follow, but we really have to pay attention with who we are engaging with, how they make us feel about ourselves. And um, if they, if we feel seen and understood, um, are really mm-hmm. important things to think about when we're looking at our virtual village. Hmm. I I can understand. Like, yeah, I think there's there's probably a number of of pages out there, or you know, digital creators who have this seemingly sort of perfect life. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I and I've seen them. There's there's a few. Let's say before twins, um, I used to do a lot more traveling. And mm-hmm. I still, I love to travel. And so sometimes when I see some of the pages where, you know, they're, they're traveling with twins to, you know, exotic places mm-hmm. and I think, oh gosh, you know, I, I wish that I could have done, I mean, when my girls were little, I mean, we, we, we did not travel for the first few years mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. um, it, or, I mean, we're, we're starting to now because they're yep. older. Um, and so I, I can relate because there's, there's sometimes I feel like, well, why couldn't we do that? Well, why didn't we just get that together? And so there's this this almost sense of like, I'm missing out. Mm-hmm. And so I have to really catch myself to yeah. say, is that is that filling me up? Is that making me feel good? Mm-hmm. Things that I have control over? Yeah. Is it is it inspiring me or is it making me feel like I've just, you know, I, I'm, I'm missing something? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
That's so important. Yeah. Because it, it comes on, like we see a reel and like every five seconds we're seeing a new reel or, or a new post or whatever it is. So our, we normally don't take the time to think about that. But that's something that we can intentionally pay attention to is if we go to someone's page and we look at their stuff and we think, oh, I don't really know. This just makes me feel like I'm not trying hard enough or this makes me really miss travel. And now that's taking away from being present from from my girls. Then we can think about, you know what? No, that one right now, that's not where I'm at in, in this life. Um, and being able to continue to almost like trigger and activate yourself by seeing that is just not for you right now. And it's not filling you up, like you said. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, so what, I, I know you've got a really great program. So what yeah. resources can you recommend to our listeners today who, who really want to make a change in the way that they define their life and, and really thrive as a twin parent? Yeah. Um, so I um, have a free guide. So I've given you um, the free guide. So it'll be in the, in the show notes. Um, and so that free guide is a great place to get started just to learn um, a little bit about me and to learn about the work that I do. And it has some really great strategies in there to be able to help help um, us notice this uh, survival mode and then um, do easy and practical strategies to help ease that maybe overwhelming anxiety. And then I'm um, active on um, Instagram. My um, handle is at harmony underscore in underscore multiples. Um, and so there I really try to focus on posting um, that the content that I needed when I became a quit twin mom. I needed other moms out there saying like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. And um, I needed to see, to just to, for people to be able to uh, say that this this is hard. And so I tried to step into that space on Instagram. I have a, a Facebook group that I um, offer as well for twin moms, um, focusing on easing that overwhelming anxiety and overstimulation um, for twin moms. And then I also have um, a program, a coaching program that I offer twin moms as well. Um, and in that coaching program, we really focus on all of these things that are causing us to stay stuck in survival mode and then really focus on how do we get twin moms on the twin mom um, thriving path. Um, and so that that's what this program focuses on. And then I provide coaching within that program because I know how important it is to be able to get that support. Um, oftentimes we buy a course and we think we're going to spend time doing it and we're going to um, get it done. And we never do. I honestly can say I probably have two or three that I've purchased in the past and haven't had the time to do. And so what um, the program that I offer, I provide um, coaching support within the program to help with accountability, to help with motivation to help with, okay, what does this look like in actual real life? You tell me to do one thing for myself. I have no idea how even, how even to get started. I don't know what to do. Then we can provide that coaching support to be able to individualize this for, for your life. So each person can have that opportunity to thrive with twins. Wow. Well, this has been such an enlightening discussion with you today. And so thank you, Kristen, for yes, bringing forward for such me. just really important information that we, we don't get elsewhere. Um, and for our listeners, if you'd like to learn more about Kristen's program to help twin moms thrive, so you can visit newmommymedia.com where we'll have all the links to um, Kristen's website and Facebook group. And you also have all of the Twin Talks podcast episodes, plus videos and more. Well, that wraps up our show for today. Thanks for listening. If you like Twin Talks as much as we do, well, please consider checking out the amazing businesses that sponsor our show week after week. And we'd also love for you to tell other twin parents about this resource, which of course is absolutely free. And if you want to check out some of our other parenting podcasts, such as Newbies, it's everything about newborns, Parent Savers, think parenting hacks, The Boob Group, The Lowdown on Breastfeeding, and Preggy Pals, everything you could possibly need to know about pregnancy. Then visit our website at newmommymedia.com. Thanks for listening to Twin Talks, Parenting Times 2. This has been a New Mommy Media production. The information and material contained in this episode are presented for educational purposes only. Statements and opinions expressed in this episode are not necessarily those of New Mommy Media and should not be considered facts. While such information and materials are believed to be accurate, it is not intended to replace or substitute for professional medical advice or care, and should not be used for diagnosing or treating healthcare problem or disease or prescribing any medication. 
If you have questions or concerns regarding your physical or mental health or the health of your baby, please seek assistance from a qualified health care provider. Hey, mamas. Don't forget to check out Mighty Moms. It's our online community built for new moms just like you. Not only can you connect with other moms, but you can also join us backstage for special mom-only online events. And you'll also be notified when we're recording so you can join us as a special guest. Visit our website, newmommymedia.com, and click on the Mighty Moms banner. It's free. That's newmommymedia.com. See you there.